Welcome back to the channel. Well, it's that time. It's time to paint the XB Coupe and um, I thought I'd make a video. So I did put up um, a bit of a, uh, a community post on my channel asking if you wanted a detailed version or a short and sweet version. And it looks like we're gonna be doing a detailed version. And um, so yeah, so basically the car's all masked up already. Um, I've used the DNA Paints Wax and Grease Remover. I've gone over that very thoroughly uh, over the whole car, inspecting each and every panel. Um, making sure that there's no little imperfections in the in the primer which uh, I may have not uh, seen during the prep stage. Keep in mind, I did prep it in my dark shed. So visibility on the car was to a, bare, a very bare minimum. Um, but yeah, it's good to get it in a booth and uh, given the opportunity to really go over it and um, have a really good look. So what's left? Um, I basically want to mix up a wet and wet primer going to use the HS primer mixed at four to one to one which then turns it from a high, uh, a high build primer into a surface of primer which is a wet on wet which means that will basically seal down any bare metal spots I may have on the car um, and allow me to put my uh, my colors straight over the top without having to see in that primer so um, that's the whole uh, reason why it's called a wet on wet primer um, so in regards to colour, I'll be using the De Beers base coat. Um, I probably shouldn't be saying that word around here, being that I'm at DNA, but um, we're going to be using uh, the De Beers. Um, we'll be clearing it in the DNA Custom Clear. Going to put uh, three nice, real wet coats using the um, the Welcome 360 lights um, and uh, yeah, basically standard gun setup. Three and a half turns out, fan open, two bar air pressure, and um, yeah, usual gun distance away from the panel. So, with that being said, guys, let's go jump in the booth. We'll take a quick look before we start getting into it. all been seam sealed it's time to basically get some more prep so on some rags and go along where the tape was and make sure all those areas are, are nice and clean because sometimes 
the sticky residue off the tape will actually transfer onto the body of the car and um, yeah, you won't find out until you put your base coat down and you'll notice that it looks rat shit. So very, very important that you, yeah, you prep so where all the tape was. All right, so for my wet and wet primer, I'll be using the Welcome Ego 190. So this is a mini gun. Uh, looks heaps smaller than the bigger brother. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna use this for my wet and wet primer. And um, yeah, it should be all good. So uh, I usually, wind my fluid out um, about four turns out. Um, it is only tiny, 1.2. Um, fan all the way open, and uh, I'll probably run that at about 1.8 bar of air pressure. So um, yeah, it's really good for those real tight underneath seal panels and all those tight little spots that you may have trouble tilting your gun up underneath cars to paint. Um, but yeah, there'll be links in the description. Go check it out. So I've pretty much put three coats of white base coat over the whole car. I've given a, a really thorough tack rag. I actually put two down first, gave it the tack rag, um, realized that there was a couple of transparent areas, mainly the roof. So I decided to put a third coat over the whole car just for safety reasons. Um, now it's time to basically let that flash off now. Um, because there's gonna be so many coats of like color and like clear coat and stuff on this car, um, it's always good to basically let each step or each coat flash right off. Um, if you're going for the ultimate flat finish like I am, um, it does pay to basically let every single coat flash off. And, and look, on a big car like this, um, if you were to paint one whole side of a car and then go around and do the other side, by the time you've done that other side, the first side is already dry and flashed off, ready for another coat anyway. So. Um, you don't need to be too fussy about flash times when you're doing a big respray. It's mainly small parts, individual parts and stuff like that. You've really got to yeah, watch your flash off times. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we'll mix up some orange base coat now. Um, I'll jump to the Ego 190 um, and basically go around underneath the sill panels, around all the windows, all those real tight, hard to get places that um, can be a little bit tricky with a bigger gun. Um, I've done that with the seal panels with the white, so I know that all those tight little spots underneath the car are all covered, um, which will make the orange uh, cover in less coats as well. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's start mixing up this paint and we'll start throwing it down.
So that's our first coat of orange. Now, the first initial thoughts you were probably thinking is wow, it covers really good. Well, that's pretty much because of that white ground coat. Um, if you were to put it over gray, it'd be extremely dark and um, it wouldn't cover as well as that. So um, yeah, that's why white is a really good ground coat. So a lot of paint manufacturers will always recommend a, uh, a certain color for um, the top coat color um, that's simply because of coverage now there's no point them selling you a four liter kit of paint if you're going to need eight liters to paint a car because you put the wrong ground coat down so a good uh, way to find out um, what color ground coat to use is by speaking with the manufacturer or the place that you're buying the paint from ask for a technical data sheet on that color or that product or and it will tell you everything you need to know about uh, the products you're using so um, yeah I just know from experience white is the ground coat for orange and greens and blues and stuff like that and sometimes reds but not necessarily uh, reds are usually uh, like a darker gray um, not black but like a dark gray and uh, you'll find you'll get some nice coverage uh, results with that so um, I'm going to let this uh, first coat of orange flash right off. Um, I actually noticed there was a couple of tiny specks of dust on the left hand rear quarter panel as I was painting. So um, I'll grab some 1000 grit sandpaper and I'll go along and I'll denib all those. And then um, I'll go over the rest of the car, make sure it's all looking pretty good. And um, yeah, I'll continue with the uh, second coat of orange.
So that's two coats down now. Uh, you really notice how much the color changes when you start applying more coats. It gets darker, it gets more vibrant. Um, it's really starting to show that burnt orange kind of look now. And um, yeah, it's looking really good. Now you'll notice that I didn't put um, orange down on the back panel, down on the, or like the beaver panel, right down low. That's simply because um, I'm painting that walnut glow. Uh, same with the back panels, only had one coat of orange um, and also pretty much from the guards, the lines on the guards, um, the lines on the doors down the bottom, from there down has only got one coat of orange. Now it doesn't need to have the full three coats that I plan on putting on the car. Um, it's gonna be getting painted over in walnut glow. So uh, shortly once I let this second coat flash off for another probably five minutes, um, I'll then get some, I'll put my, I'll basically put um, the tack rag over the whole car, make sure there's no dust and lint on the car, um, put my third and final coat of orange down let that sit for about 10 minutes. Um, the paint is flashing off rather well. I'm not getting any dry spots now because I turned the temperature down to 22 degrees. That definitely helped and solved that problem, which is good. Um, all that's left to do now, once the third coat has been put on, is I'll put uh, basically fine line tape around where I've got a mask off and then put paper over it and then basically paint the walnut glow from the lines down.
there's two coats of custom clear over the XB. It's uh, very clean, all the panels are dead straight. I'm uh, pretty stoked with it. Uh, I'm completely knackered. I've got one more coat of clear to go. Um, so basically the idea is, is I've been putting them on really wet and I've been, uh, been allowing uh, about 15 minutes between coats. Now, generally by the time you clear one side and then you go around to the other side, it almost takes 15 minutes to do that other side, so your first side's pretty much ready to go, but I've been leaving it like an extra five minutes, just just for, I guess, argument's sake. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty knackered. It's, uh, it's 10 to 11 at night, and uh, I've been at it since eight o'clock this morning. So, big day, um, one more coat of clear to go. Um, but yeah, but yeah. Well, 30 weeks ago, I started this. Full bare metal, done all the repairs, had some pretty naked panels on it. Um, I'm out of words. It's 11.30 at night, pretty naked now. My wife's staring at me thinking, can we go home yet? Just want to say big cheers, big thanks to basically everyone that's watched my videos on this XB. It's probably brought a lot of uh, of my subscribers on my channel to see one getting done, um, and it's finally painted. All right, well she's just finished baking. Let's go in and take a look. Whew, she's hot in here. really hot in here so yeah that's the XB got a couple of specks of dust on the bonnet nothing too bad everything else is really really nice nice glassy roof it's actually quite surprising usually you get specks of dust on the roof but I can't see any specks of dust on there. <laughs> There's a couple of tiny, tiny little ones, but... That's it, burnt orange, clear over base. Three coats of white, three coats of orange, three coats of clear. Come out really, really good. Let's check how straight it is, eh? Can't complain with that. Thirty weeks, roughly.
All right, so we're down at work. We're, we've got the owner here, Michael, of the XB. Uh, this is going to be our first impressions. So, yeah, turn wow. them on. Wow, jeez. This, this is my car, right? This is your car. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Look at that gloss. Wow, man. That's unbelievable. That, that is amazing. Take my hat off to you, mate. Wow. <laughs> oh, oh, what can I say? I'm lost for words. Wow. Have a look, have a good look down it. He get down and have a look down it. Make sure it's straight. I know it's straight, so. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure you're you're fussy, Mark. And you see things that I can't see. So, you know, you've done a fucking fabulous job. I'm stoked. You got that box of tissues? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look at that. Look at that. So there's that quarter panel which took a week to get straight. This thing was three years in the, in the making, this. And I've still got to put it together. <laughs> Thank God I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay, it came to me all in pieces. So, you know, um, geez, that walnut glow. Doesn't that look great? Wow. Well, what can I say, Matt? Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your time and effort. Um, I'm sure I'm sure your viewers will be waiting for this video to be posted. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so uh, have, gonna, have a look at the roof. You got on yeah, oh, look at all that. The, look how glassy it is. That's that's amazing. Look at that. And you haven't even polished it yet. I haven't even polished it. This is all off the gun. And this is um. DNA diamond. This is the DNA custom clear, and custom there's clear. three coats. Three coats. Jeez, that walnut. That walnut white. I'm glad we put that in. I'm glad. Look at that. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks again, Mark. Oh, good, mate. Thanks again. <laughs> Hit that like button, guys. <laughs> Tell me. Right. Oh, there you go. Job done. All right, guys. So we're down here with Mick, the owner. We've got we've got masks on. I don't, but we'll just <laughs> we'll just go like that for the video. All right. So I've got a measuring tape. So we've what we've done. Can you hold that for a sec, Mick? All right, so what we've got here, guys, is a, uh, here's the diagrams. It's a bit hard to show you when it's like this. So these are the diagrams that I followed um, as well. Um, and we've also got uh, a picture of an XB on the front here. So uh, for the people that are interested in what we're going to do, we've kind of up um, a line here. So what we're going to do is basically now measure with our, our, our ruler basically um, the width between the two lines. So it's roughly, what do you reckon, Mick? 22, 20. Depends on where you want to go. Yeah. Shall we say 25? Okay, we'll say 25. 
make it a bit easier. Yeah, from that from that body line here. Yeah, from the, from the body line to the inner So it's going to run parallel right through. That remains the same. Yeah. Right through. And, it, and there was a bit of confusion because you go on Marketplace, Facebook, and you look at all the groups and you look at all the body lines of, of other paint jobs, and they're different. They are so different. Um, so we've decided we're going to go with what we've got here which I found on one of the, the groups, and um, we're gonna follow this one. So you hear it first, guys. So that's what we're gonna do. So 25, um, so the stripes actually start um, up the back here um, on the scuttle panel. So when the scuttle panel's on, the outer flute, um, basically you follow the outer edge of the flute all the way down, and that's where you get your starting point from. Um, and you follow that down dead straight. Yep. Um, it needs to be 10 mil from the outer edge of the vent here. And then um, as we've just uh, spoke about, we're going 25 mil from the edge of that line to the outer edge, yep. all the way down, all the way down. And what do you want to do about the pinstripe on the outside? Right, the pinstripe has to now come in and follow the same. The yep. distance you've got here to there, which is I think 22 mil. Was it, is it 22? Oh, I think it was, let's follow it. Yep, gap between blackout and pinstripe is 22 mil. Okay, so we'll go 22 mil okay. from the outer yeah. edge to and there. that 22 mil all the way through. All the way through. All the way through. And you're happy with the six mil uh, I'm happy with the pin line. six mil, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Six mil is fine. Cool. Thank you. 